Righto team, let's get into it. I'm going to try and keep this tutorial to under an hour and I think with a bit of ruthless editing that should be possible. So here we go. Cool, so the way we'll create the scene is we'll set up baby Yoda followed by the log he's hiding behind and then we'll set up our lighting. After that we'll jump into the background flower trees, the ferns, the moss and the mushrooms and then we'll add our atmospheric floaties. Once that's built we'll build our camera move which is the Vertigo Jaws camera move and then we'll do any lighting tweaks. We'll render, we'll throw it into After Effects, colour grade it and spit it out as our video. Let's just set up the project file first. So just come to mode, project, set our frame rate, I'm going 25. Then let's go with 250 frames here, so 10 seconds. Up to the render settings, change that to redshift. And the output here, we're going to go with a square frame. So let's just go 1000 by 1000. And let's change the frame rate here too to match what we put there earlier, 25. Let's come down to redshift. This can mostly stay as it is. Let's just change the progressive passes to 128. Remember to keep that in multiples of four and the rest is fine for now. Okay, let's get Baby Yoda into this scene. So I got the model on Turbo Squid. I'll put the link in the description. It's by an artist called Stakosaurus. And the incredible thing is, is that it's free. It's an amazing rig. It is currently only available as a Maya file. So I'm going to convert it quickly to an FBX to use in cinema. If you don't have access to Maya to convert it to an FBX, there are plenty of other Baby Yoda models, including this one that looks more like a cat for $7. Uh, and that includes an FBX and an OBJ, so you can use those in cinema. I'm going to use the one by Stakosaurus because it's an incredible rig and I actually think it's one of the better ones. Um, now he's actually got his own channel with some tutorials on how to use this rig in Maya. So I'll link to that in the description as well. So all I did in Maya was put his arms by his side and then exported it as a FBX. So if you're following along with the Stakosaurus Baby Yoda, you'll have the original directory from the download from TurboSquid and you'll have your FBX that you exported out of Maya. So come into cinema and you want to merge the FBX. This should all be fairly good and it'll come in really tiny so just come to the coordinates tab here, make sure Baby Yoda selected coordinate and let's just go 10 all around. So let's just delete some of the rigs. So just twirl that down. You can delete the guts and the controls group there. We will delete the rest of the rig, but before we do that, we just want to assign the redshift textures to our Baby Yoda. So let's create a new redshift material. Actually, before we go any further, let's just organize our workspace for setting up these shaders. Okay, let's start with the collar material. So let's rename this RS collar. And now we need to find the texture that came with the Yoda rig for the collar. Dig into the folder structure here until you find the textures and look for the collar. Now we're only going to use the diffuse here. Drag that into the shader graph. And let's plug that into the diffuse collar. Okay, let's make a few changes. So come to the RS material node, come into the ref. Base properties, reflections, change the IOR to 1.05. Okay, come down to sheen, just change it to black, zero this all out. Come to the advanced tab and then just come down to where it says sheen, direct scale and direct scale. You want both those to be zero as well. I'm not going to use the normal map that came with the rig, so I'm going to use a wool displacement map that I got from this website and I'll put the link in the description for that as well. So just download the 2K map and just grab the displacement and drop that into the shader graph as well. So for that you will need a displacement node like that into there, into the texture map and then plug that directly into the output node displacement. We will set up the displacement on the object later but just leave that set up as it is now. I can however tell you that the scale of this map is too large so we'll get around that just by putting in a constant node click on the constant node and you want to change it to vector plug that into the displacement map come down to general scale and then we just want to put 30 in there and I know from previous tries that that works okay let's assign this material so just hold down alt and drag it on top of the old one and that'll replace it out don't worry about the glitchy material at the moment, we'll solve that in a moment. Let's duplicate that material, holding down control and pulling to the side. Rename this RS Clothing. Find the clothing diffuse, here it is here, back in the Baby Yoda rig. And let's plug that into the diffuse, delete the column. And let's now hold down Alt and drop that onto the clothing. 
Next is the skin, create new redshift material and choose skin shader. Let's find the hand textures, there it is there. And I will use normals for the skin. Drag those into the shader graph. You want to plug that in here, so you'll see that there are three scattering layers, deep, mid, shallow, and you want to plug it into the color for each of the three scattering channels. Okay, let's plug in the normal, so you need a bump node. Plug that into the input, and plug this into the bump mapping, bump input. Don't forget to change the bump map to a tangent space normal. Okay, let's change some of the glossiness of this texture. So come to the reflection tab, let's change the weight to 0.7 in the primary reflection. Come down to the secondary reflection, let's make that 0.4 and let's change the glossiness to 0.35. Let's name this material RS hands and let's hold down alt and drop that onto the old one. Let's duplicate that material, hold down control, drag across, rename this RS head. Let's find the head textures. Drop them in. Let's plug this diffuse into each of those scattering channels. Click the old one. And let's plug that into the normal into the input there. Delete the old one. And then we can hold down Alt and drop them to the head. I do find the head shader is a little bit too green. So let's throw a color correct node in here. Okay, let's put the texture, the head texture, into the input. Let's put the out color down to those scatters. And let's just change the hue to 340. And that just adds a little bit of yellow into the texture. Right, next is the eye. This is the eye texture here. So let's create a new redshift material. And if we have a look in the texture folder that came with the Baby Yoda, this is the texture here. And I didn't, I found this one didn't work quite as well as I would have liked it to. So all I did was threw it into Photoshop and made a slightly different version of it. You can just see the differences there between the two. That's the one I created, that's the one that came with it. Uh, if you want that, just hit me up in the comments and I can always send you that. But uh, that's the difference I made, just a slightly smaller pupil and added a little more texture. Put that into the shader graph. Plug that into our diffuse, and this one's pretty simple. Just come across to the RS material, base properties, reflection, leave the weight at 1, but just give it a 0.1 roughness. And then you can hold down Alt and drop that onto there. Right, we don't see the teeth or the tongue or that other material, so we can delete all three of those. We don't need them. Great, now that we've got those textures assigned, let's keep cleaning up the rig. Select it all. Select children, right click on the top, on the top null, current state to object. And then you can delete the original, delete the joints group, twirl these down, and you want to just go through and select the geometry and pull it out from underneath those nulls. You can delete those nulls. In fact, you can delete the tongue and the teeth. You don't need those either. Great. Now we can delete the weight tags and we can delete the normal tags and that starts cleaning up the geometry. Okay, next thing is this model is fairly low poly. So grab yourself a subdivision surface, drop it under the first null and then just take the whole group and drop it under that subdivision surface just to give yourself some more geometry there. Right, while we're at it, we'll add our redshift tag to the collar. So right click on the collar, come to the redshift menu and choose redshift object, geometry tab, override, enable tessellation and enable displacement. Change the minimum edge length to one, copy that tag onto the body. Okay, I do feel the displacement's a little bit strong on the body portion, so come down to the displacement scale, change that to 0.4. Okay, he's starting to look quite good, uh, but Baby Yoda does have some wispy hairs. If we just take a quick look at some reference here, you can see them here. They're fairly subtle, and it's something that's reasonably easy to achieve in cinema, so we will just put some hairs quickly on his head as well. So let's just close Redshift for a moment. Turn the subdivision surface off. First thing we need to do is select the polygons where we want the hair to grow. So come across to Polygon Mode, select his head mesh, and then just choose our Live Selection tool, and we're just going to paint the area now. Hold down shift to keep adding to the selection. If you get any polygons you don't want, just hold down control and that will remove it from the selection. Okay, that's looking quite good. So come up to the select menu and choose set selection. You can name that selection here, polygons. 
and making sure that selection tag is still selected come up to simulate hair objects add hair select the hair object come down to guides let's change this to five centimeters and change the root to polygon area if that doesn't do anything just come down to editing and choose regrow now what we want to do is just give them a bit of a hairstyle so come up to simulate hair tools brush and if we just take a look at that reference again so if we look at this one we can see that the hairs on the top of his head are lying quite flat and they stick up a little more on the ears so let's just do that so using the brush tool and we'll make the tool a little smaller and you do that by just using the bracket keys same as Photoshop and we can just start brushing the hairs by clicking and dragging drag the hairs in the direction you want can use a bigger brush if you want. Now if you do brush it too flat like I have just there, just go up to the simulate menu, come down to hair tools and choose straighten and then just click and drag and you can just stand it back up until you get something you like. Okay let's go back to the brush tool and it's look pretty good, let's just a little bit of randomness in the ears there. Okay cool, let's open redshift And now let's set up the hair shader. So by default Cinema 4D has added this Cinema 4D hair material. And we use a combination of that and the Redshift shader. So create new Redshift material here. And what you want to do is drop that onto the hair object as well. And to edit the hair properties, we're going to click on the C4D hair material. So firstly, let's just come down to the thickness here and put some values in here, some much thinner values in here. So we're going to go for the root thickness 0.05. That's the start thickness. And we'll change the finish thickness to 0.0001. Now there's currently far too many hairs. So just come across to the hair object, come to the hairs tab, and let's change this to 2500. And while we're here, just come across to the Dynamics tab and turn disable that as well. We don't want any Dynamics. Let's come back across here. Let's go back to the color on the material and let's just change these to something different. Let's make it very light, something like that. All right, let's just get a better look for a moment. Okay, come down to Length, enable that. Let's give it 90% variation there. Come down to Frizz, enable that. Let's give it 100% Frizz with a 50% variation. Enable kink. Let's give that 60% there and come down to curl and we'll leave those settings. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Drop the hair object underneath our baby Yoda now. We'll leave the subdivision surface disabled for now. Let's close redshift and let's charge on with the rest of the scene. So, create a plane. This is going to be the ground. Let's make it a thousand by a thousand. Let's jump across into Quixel Bridge, find a texture. We're going to use this one here, Ground Roots. Let's change this to 2K. We're not intending to see too much of the ground, so we don't need to spend too much time working on this. So just change it to 2K, making sure that Quixel Bridge is set up correctly to export to Cinema 4D and Redshift, and click Export. That'll add your Redshift texture into here, and we can drop it straight onto the plane. Add a Redshift tag to the plane. Come to the Geometry tab, Override, Enable Tessellation, Enable Displacement. Let's make the maximum displacement 100 and let's make the displacement scale 15. Let's rename that ground and let's drop it under a null. Let's call this Set. This object panel is going to get very full so we need to try and make sure we keep it organised. Okay, let's find the log that he's going to be hiding behind so come back into Bridge. We're going to use this one here, Mossy Log. Okay, so just bear with me for a moment. We are going to have two versions of this log in the project. So before you export it to Cinema, just make sure that in your download settings here, come across to the Models tab and just scroll down. Make sure you have High Poly Source selected. Come back to your log for download. We don't need the 8K resolution texture. We'll just use a 4K. Export that to Cinema. Before we jump into Cinema though, right click on the asset, go to Files. That will show you in the File Explorer where your downloaded object is. So what you want to do is just copy the location. Okay, head back into Cinema and come up to File, Merge and paste that location into there. Scroll down to the high poly model, open that. 
double check the settings they all look fine to me and they come in quite small so so now you'll have a high poly version and the LOD zero version so what you want to do is select both of those make sure object mode selected hit the scale tool and then you want to start scaling them up okay let's tidy this up so come into the mossy log texture and you just want to disable the displacement we don't need the displacement just disable that so just to explain what we're doing, the high poly version is the version that's going to render and the LOD zero version is the one we're going to use to scatter the moss on. So that's why we don't need the displacement on the texture. So you do want to select the texture and hold control down and drag it onto the high poly model. So what we'll do to avoid confusion, let's disable the high poly version in the viewport and let's disable the LOD zero version in the render. Let's drop those two into a null, call that log, put that into set. Okay, let's spend some time just positioning uh, the log and Yoda. So we'll go to a top view. Let's take Yoda back a little bit. Let's use the null to add some rotation to the log. I think we are just going to make the log a little bigger. So just not using the null, just make sure you select both the assets and scale them together. When you move it though, you use the null. Cool, cool. So, add a redshift camera. Let's look through the camera. Let's call this RS camera 80 millimeter and come to the object tab and under the focal length here, change this to 80. And what we want to do now is just loosely find our frame. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's set up a focus plane. So, just jump out of the camera for a moment by clicking this. You want to create a null. Let's call this focus. Let's come down to the nulls object, change it to a circle, make it 30, and change the orientation to Z. And just move it up. And you want to just put that exactly where you want the focus. So in this case, I'm going to line it up, jump into a side view. I'm going to line it up directly with the front of his eyes. Jump back into the camera. Come down to the object tab and where you see focus object, drop that into there. Okay, jump back into the camera. Okay, click on the redshift camera tag, select the bokeh tab, click override and enabled. Let's set up the depth of field. So change the derive from camera to focus distance, change the COC radius to 5, change the power to 2. Let's have a look at redshift to see what that's doing. So the cameras we're setting up now are mostly going to assist us with lighting the scene and building the rest of the scene. We'll set up the motion camera as one of the last things we do. So just for now, to help us with the lighting, just set up two other cameras. So duplicate this one, hold down control. Let's call this one 300 millimeter. Come down into the object tab and change that to 300. Let's make sure we look through that camera. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Let's duplicate that 80 mil once more. Let's call this 35 millimeter and let's change that down here to oh, 36 and let's look through that one okay so now what we have is three cameras at slightly different focal lengths that we can use to set up the scene and let's just disable these cameras in the viewport so we don't have to see those blue squares and let's put a protection tag on these cameras so right click uh, onto rigging tags and then down to protection control click onto each of those cameras just so we can't accidentally screw them up create a null call that cams select the focus and the cameras and drop them under that and let's look through the 80 all right let's set up some lighting let's add a redshift dome light so redshift lights dome light and what we want to do is we want to put an hdri into this scene primarily for to give him some good reflections in his eyes so i wanted a nighttime hdri which had quite a lot of high contrast and i couldn't easily find one that didn't have a lot of man-made lights and high contrast so what i did was i went to polyhaven which used to be hdri haven and i grabbed this one which is the cave wall i'll put the link in the description and then i just quickly threw it into photoshop and i actually just masked out the daylight areas to this so all i did was copy this center area crunched it down and put it off to the side just to give me a sort of interesting uh, hdri to use so come to your dome light make sure the object tab selected and you want to drop your hdri into where it says texture there okay let's fire up redshift all right let's increase the intensity to six Come across to the details tab here and just scroll down to where it says reflection. We really want to boost the reflection. We're going to primarily be using this for the reflection in his eyes. So just boost that to 5. And if you jump into your 300mm camera, you'll be able to see that clearer. And so what we want to do is we want to rotate that HDRI. 
So just make sure the dome light's selected. Choose the rotate tool. We're gonna rotate it until we get the most interesting detail in his eyes. So interestingly enough, that's actually the ground plane you can see cutting through his eyes there. And I don't mind that look. And the intensity of the reflection will be decreased once we have the rest of our lighting in place. So just jump out to the 80 mil and just see how adjusting that HDRI has affected the rest of the lighting on his face to see if you like that. And I am liking that, so I think we can move on. Okay, add the dome light to a group. Let's call this lighting, or Alex for short. And let's create our next light. So, redshift, lights, let's make an area light. Let's adjust a few things. So, come to the object tab, and where it says shape here, just change that to disc. Now, what we wanna do with some of our lights is we wanna target them. So, right click on the light, come up to where it says animation tab. It might be a little cut off there, but it's the top one there, and just come down to target. Now, for the target for this light, we can actually just use the focus plane as well. So, making sure that target tag select you want to drag the focus into the target object and this light is going to be a top light so just come into a better view just make sure the light's selected grab the move tool and we just want to move it up above Yoda and it will automatically orientate itself to be pointing directly at him because we've targeted it and we just want to move it straight up from his head now if you want to just switch the access to world mode just click that and then we can just go straight up put it there and just put it so just put it slightly above and slightly behind Okay, now it's far too intense, so come back over here. Let's dial this down to 40. Now, because I want to have the greatest amount of flexibility with lighting, the great thing about lighting CG scenes is that you can assign certain lights to certain objects. So I want this light to be the Yoda top light, and I only want it to light Yoda. So what I want to do is come to the project tab, and in here I want to change the mode to include, which means we're going to choose which objects it lights, and then just take the top Yoda null and drop it in there. And now you can see that light's only affecting Yoda. Okay, while we're here, let's just go to the Details tab. I'm just going to increase the reflections for this light as well. Now, it is starting to look quite blown out. I am overcranking this light because as soon as we add the volume, it will dull all the lights. In fact, let's add that now so we can see what we're dealing with. So just put that into the Lighting tab. Just come to Redshift, Objects, Environment. Okay, come down to Tint. Change that to uh, the light grey. Change the scattering to 0.001. Change the attenuation to 0.2 and change the phase to 0.7. Now I don't want the Yoda lights that I'm setting up now to actually affect that volume. Uh, we'll use our, the lights that we use to light the set, they're the ones that will affect the volume. So just come back to the Yoda top light, make sure you've got the details panel selected, scroll down and where it says volume just change that to zero. Okay. Chuck our redshift environment in a null, call that SFX, special effects. All right, let's move on to our next light. So let's just stop the live viewer for a moment. Let's just duplicate that top light. Let's call this Yoda front light. And let's move it down. We want to position this in front of him. We're just going to use it as a fill light just for uh, the side on our Yoda. Let's just drop its intensity down to come to object, drop that to 10. We want it to be to the front and quite close. Okay, it's too big as well, so let's just drop the size down to 50 by 50. Let's fire up the live view, have a look. Okay, that's quite good for now. It's giving his face some nice contrast. Uh, I, we don't like this though. We can see the light and reflection. So just come to the details tab and where it says reflection, just change that to zero. Great, let's put some lights on the set now. So let's duplicate the Yoda top light. And the first thing we'll do is come to the project tab and we'll change this to exclude. So we're not adding any more light to Yoda. We're just gonna start adding lights to the set. And so this is saying we're gonna exclude Yoda, but we can light everything else. And so for this light, come into the details tab. Let's change reflection to one. And we do want this to affect the volume. So change that to one. Rename this to set. Let's make the set top light a little larger to cover more of the set. So go to the object tab, come down, let's make this one 350. And let's just drop its intensity to 25. Okay, the next light we wanna make is a backlight for the set. So let's duplicate the top light and let's call this backlight. Switch to a side view. Let's go to world access mode and let's just drag it down behind Yoda and then back. Let's drop its size. 150. Let's increase its intensity and let's come to the details tab and let's turn off volume for this one and we'll increase the reflection for this one. 
Now we just need a bit of a frontal fill light on the set as well. So let's duplicate the top light again and call this one front. Uh, let's move this light right around to the front. Okay, let's change the intensity. Let's go seven. Now this backlight, uh, I don't like what it's doing on the ground. It's mostly going to be for the moss later on. So let's just go in into the backlight, go into the project tab, twirl down the set, find our ground plane, and let's add that to the exclude list. Okay, that's good for lighting now. We might come back at the end and do some tweaks, but that's good for now. Let's move on to set dressing the rest of the background and the moss. Let's start with the trees. Head back into bridge and choose a tree. I like these ones because they're quite interesting looking. Export that into cinema. Now because these are going to be in the background and they're going to be quite soft focus, we're actually going to grab a different LOD. So just right click on it, go to files, copy that address, come back into cinema, file, merge. Grab the LOD5, import that, that's fine. Okay, let's grab one more tree. Grab this one as well and do the same thing. Okay, before we delete the LOD zeros, let's just grab the redshift tag and the material tag and transfer them across to the lower poly version. Then we can delete both those. And now what you want to do is you want to set dress a bunch of these trees in behind Yoda. And duplicate them, rotate them around to make them look different. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now because we are going to scatter some flowers to make these trees look quite fantastical, we are going to combine these meshes together so that we can have the greatest control over where to scatter the flowers. So just come up to here and you want to choose connect. Take the four trees and drop them under the connect. And then you can go right click on it and come down to current state to object. And that creates one mesh with those trees. Now let's turn the connect off. Let's disable this in both viewport and renderer. Put it in a null. We will keep that in case we ever need to come back and change it. Let's call that old trees. And let's just put that down the bottom out of the way. Now delete these nulls. Let's rename this flower trees. Okay, so what we need to do, select your tree geometry there. Let's close redshift for a moment. Let's jump out of the camera. What we want to do is we want to select where on this geometry we want to scatter those flowers. So polygon mode, live selection tool. Now just take a moment to go around each of the trees selecting where you'd like the flowers to grow. So I sort of go in all the join areas at the tops like so up there. Remember to hold shift just to keep adding to that selection. Okay, and jump back into the camera. And let's just think about when we're actually looking at an angle like this, where we might want them to grow. So I think we'd probably want some there and probably there too. Maybe a couple more there. You want to go up to the select menu and choose set selection. Cool, let's name that flower geo. Okay, the next thing we need to do is find our flower to scatter. We come back into bridge. And I actually use this one, see thrift. 2k will be enough and let's export that into cinema okay let's throw these into a null and just tuck them down for a moment out of the way drop that under the flower trees okay next thing we're going to need is a matrix scatter so come up to the redshift menu objects matrix scatter let's come down to the object tab change that to object and the object here we do want to drag our tree geometry and then here where it says selection, we want to take that tag we created. Make sure you get the right tag. It, it would probably be the last one here. You want to drag that into the selection. Okay, let's try a count of 2000. Come across to the redshift tag. Come down to the particles tab. Change the mode to custom objects. Then we want to select the flowers, all of the flower geometry. And we want to drop that into the custom objects. Okay, let's fire up redshift. So sometimes to see what's going on better, let's just come back to the camera, the 80 millimeter and the redshift tag, and let's just turn off the bokeh for a moment and then we'll be able to see what's happening back there. Okay, so it's looking interesting, but it's not quite right. So come back to the matrix, change the up vector to plus Y. Okay, I don't think there's enough. Let's up that to 3000. Okay, it's starting to get there. What I did, because I didn't want to specifically light these flowers, I added some incandescent to the materials to just pop them out a little bit. So come down to the C-Thrift material. 
What you want to do is choose the incandescent node, drop it in, plug the albedo into the illumination color, then take the arc color and drop it into the diffuse. And then select the incandescent node, illumination tab, and then play with this intensity multiplier until you get something you like. So let's just try, let's go through. Now just looking at it, I think we haven't got enough polygons selected here. There's an easy way to remedy that, the way we've set it up. Come back to our tree geometry, turn the matrix off for a moment and making sure that tag is selected and then basically hold shift and you can add some more so i'm just going to add more to this tree here once you've chosen which polygons you want to add then just come back to making sure that tag is selected come back to select and set selection and that updates it and then you can turn the matrix back on okay let's add some randomization to those click on the matrix flower and then come up to the mograph menu click effector and then come down to random select the random Come down to parameter, let's turn off position. Let's enable scale, uniform scale, 0 0.5. Enable rotation, and just add 100 in the heading and 100 in the pitch. And that gives it some quite good randomization. Okay, let's turn our bokeh back on and just see if that looks all right. All right, let's drop the random in the matrix into the flower trees. Okay, so while we're at it, I actually had some of these flowers, uh, some big ones in the foreground here, and I had a couple on the ground back here as well, just filling in gaps back here. So let's just quickly do that. So let's just make three copies of those bunches of flowers. Let's bring them up. Actually, there might be a few too many in that bundle, so let's just delete some of them. Some of that, okay, and let's just call these ones BG flowers. Let's just delete a few out of there as well, make the clumps look a bit different. We'll position these better when we set up our camera move, use them to plug holes back there. Okay, I actually think that incandescent's a little bit strong, so let's just knock that back to two. Okay, put that into the set. Okay, let's move on to the ferns. So off we go, back into bridge. And we'll just go for this one here. Let's get a 4K one for the foreground and let's get a 2K one for the background. So the top ones, so one through six, that's the 2K ones. Put them in a null. And these are the 4K ones. Okay, so spend some time set dressing the ferns. Remember to use the 4K ones in the foreground and the 2K ones in the background. That's good, let's move on to creating the moss. So I've just got another Cinema 4D project open here with my moss asset. Now this was created following a technique I use a lot and I've got a tutorial on that. I'll put a link in the window now and in the description. But it's basically an atlas from Quixel. It is this atlas here, fringe moss, and it's cut out and shaped. And then all I've done is thrown it into a cloner on a disc just with some randomization on the scale and rotation. And once it's cloned to the disc, uh, how you like it the little clump I then use current state to object which gave me all of the assets individually and I put those together into a connect to create one moss geometry that's what I've got here so yeah there's a bunch of different techniques but if you want to see how I cut out those atlas assets and shape them check out my tutorial on that so all I'm gonna do is just copy that moss clump and bring it into our project okay great let's throw that into a null call that moss then in the set, let's just put it beside the log so we know. And let's just open these so we can see what we're working with here. And we're going to use our lower quality log here. So just jump out of the camera. In fact, why don't we just turn off a couple of things while we work. Let's just change this to constant shading for a moment. And we just want to be able to see a little more detail on the log. So just come down to the mossy log texture. Come across to where it says editor here. And just change where it says texture preview size. Just change that to something slightly higher. So just let's try 1024. Actually change the display to constant shading with lines. And now what we want to do is we want to create a selection on this mesh, which is the lower resolution one, uh, where we want the moss to grow. And we do that just by coming across the polygon tool. Let's choose live selection and then we literally just paint where we want it. So I just basically paint the green areas of the texture. 
Once you've got the area selected that you want, let's just add a few more here. Come up to select and choose set selection. Let's call that MOS selection. Come up to the redshift menu, let's choose objects, matrix scatter. Let's drop that down in the MOS now. Let's come down to the object tab, let's choose object. Let's drag the LOD0 version of the log into there. Okay, let's add the selection tag that we created on the log down here where it says selection. Let's change the up vector to plus Y. And for count, let's try 2000. Okay, come to the transform tab and in the pitch, change that to negative 90. Now you wanna come up to the redshift tag on the matrix object, select that. In the particles tab, change the mode to custom objects and let's drop the moss clump into there. Let's have a look at what we're getting. All right, cool. They're a little bit big. So just come to the moss clump here into the coordinates tab and let's just scale this down slightly. While we're at it, let's add some randomization. So click on the RS matrix, come up to MoGraph, Effector, Random, let's bring that down. Let's disable position, enable scale. Let's choose uniform scale, 0.2. Let's enable rotation. For the heading, let's put 360. And for the pitch and bearing, let's just put five degrees in each of there. Okay, let's take a look at that. Um, let's jump back into our 80 mil. And what we can do to line the moss up a little better with the high res model is just select the low res version that they're cloned to. Let's change to object mode and just lower it slightly. And what that does is it starts revealing some of that model and it makes it look a little more natural. Let's just turn off bokeh like we did before so we can see what's happening. So we might have gone a little low. I think that's looking quite good. If you do want to see more of the log, you can reduce the polygon selection, just remove some of those polygons, but we'll go with that for now. The next thing we want to do is add some color variation to this moss. I've got a specific tutorial that covers adding color variation to scattered assets uh, that I'll link to here. I'm just going to shoot through it quickly now just to not drag this video out. If you want to see in more detail what I'm doing, check that video out. Great, so that's added some subtle but nice variation there, and you can go as crazy as you want with that. Okay, let's jump into bridge and grab some mushrooms. I just use these ones. Let's go 4K, export. Okay, let's jump out of the camera. Pull them out to the side. Let's have a look which ones. Just choose which ones you want. I like that one, that one, and that one. Let's just spend some time putting them into position. Okay, cool, and I made these mushrooms slightly incandescent, so let's come into the texture. Go for the incandescent node, drop that in there. Let's take the albedo output, put it into the illumination color, and let's drop the arc color into the diffuse there. So we click on the illumination tab of the incandescent node, and let's try 10, it's too much. Let's try five, six. Let's go with that for now. Let's drop that, let's call that mushrooms. Let's drop that into the set. Okay, and now time to add the floaties. Okay, there's probably a heap of ways you can do these floaties uh, with various plugins and techniques, but I like to use a rig called Micro Floaties. It's totally free, and it used to be available on a website called joeloutronwordpress.com, but that now takes you to this site, which I wasn't able to find the download. So there's a guy on Reddit who has very kindly added it to a public Google Drive folder that you can download it from. Um, I'll put the links in the description for that. So when you download it, you'll just get a folder Micro floaties by Mad Micro, and if you look in there, there's a Cinema 4D file. So we're just going to merge that Cinema 4D file with our project, and you'll get a couple of objects here. You can delete the repel camera, and you can delete the haze light. Okay, let's change some settings. So click on the Micro floaties rig, and let's just have a look at the top view. Okay, let's change the floater area to 1000. Let's take the floater size to the minimum, which is 5%. Let's change the count to 12. 
Turn the hair off, change the flutter speed to 20% and the turbulence to 20%. Now, if you come to the layers tab, just enable the hierarchy and you'll be able to see and unlock it and you'll be able to see what's happening here. Now, we don't need the hair at all, so we can actually delete those. And if you scroll down, there's also an info null here, which is this info here. Um, it's an awesome rig and, and big ups to this dude, uh, but we don't want the info there, so just delete that. Okay, and then you can just uh, relock it. Okay, so just select the Microfloaties Null here and the Move tool and just make sure it's lined up in front of the camera. Cool, okay, let's create a new material, a new redshift material, and let's make it an incandescent material. Let's open that up, and in the incandescent properties here, Illumination tab, let's change this to a light blue. You can make it whatever you want, obviously. And let's make the intensity 10, and then holding down Alt, drop it onto that first float material and then basically just go along dropping it replacing all those float materials until they're all one Let's have a look at the live viewer and there we go and there's our floaties and if you just turn that off for a moment you can just see that they are already animated and everything and they just move around the scene okay we're going to make a slightly modified version of this floater rig for the little small minute floaters that go around the mushrooms so the first thing we just want to do is make a sphere to use as a reference because we're going to build this in a different project so let's just decrease the size of this to something like 15 jump into the top view let's just jump out of the camera for a moment you just want to loosely position the sphere where you want the floaters to be just so you can get a reference for how big the area is going to be where you want those to be those floaters, floaters to be so i think that's actually pretty good size like i say that's just a reference so that's cool start a new project now I know that these floaters are already on their minimum size so we're going to create another rig that we're going to export as an Alembic and we're going to scale it down even further and I know that we're going to scale it down to about 0.1 of the size so what I'm going to do is go into that project you just created and you want to add the micro floaties project file you can delete the distance haze in the repel camera drop that to the minimum let's drop that to the minimum let's put 16 in all of the fields Let's match 20 and 20 to the other floater rig we used. Okay, that's cool. Um, let's come across to the layers tab. Let's unlock it and let's show the hierarchy. Let's delete the here. That's cool. Relock it, remove the hierarchy. Let's delete the materials. And then what we want to do is make sure that we set the, come to the project settings, change that to 25 to match our other project. Change it up here too in the output, render settings, output, change that to 25. Uh, and now we also want to match the amount of frames. So we have 250 frames. And now just double check they're working. Great. What you want to do is select that, right click, select children, just to be safe, come up to file, export, Alembic. Okay, let's just go through these settings. That all looks good. Start end frame, yep, yep. We don't need cameras even though there isn't one and that all looks good. Okay, so click OK and let's just call this. Click save, and that's going to take a while, so just let that bake out. Alright, once that's exported out of the Alembic, you want to merge it back in. So merge objects, and then choose your Alembic. Double check the settings, frame rate's right, yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, cool, and you can delete the old one. Now, what you want to do is jump back into your other project, and copy your sphere, paste it in. Now, remember we said we were going to scale these down by 10, so let's scale the, this up by 10, so go 150. Jump into a front view and just scrub through and see where the epicenter is. Because they do move around. It's actually pretty good where it is. You might just move it up slightly. So you want to put the sphere kind of where the epicenter is. Pretty good there. Now we want to lock that sphere so we don't accidentally select it. So come to right click on sphere, choose add to new layer. Come to the layers tab and lock that new layer. You can delete that micro floaties layer now. And what you want to do is grab a lasso selection and you just want to start deleting very roughly all of the objects that fall outside. Of course, this is all personal choice. You can, if you want them to be all floating around all over the place, you can leave all these. Scroll through because they will come out again. There we go. Okay, let's add our material to it while we're here. So go new redshift material incandescent and let's choose, let's go onto the material and let's click on the incandescent node. Let's choose a yellowish color a light yellow color 
and let's give it a power of seven. And so to assign this material to the floaties, you've got a lot that you need to do it to. There's all these. So the easiest way to do it is just click on the material, click on the assign tab, select all of these. There we go. Make sure in the assign tab and then drop them into there. And that will assign that material to all of those objects. Delete the info. Great, so we can now copy that, come back into our project and paste them in. Delete the sphere. So first thing you want to do is select the microfloaties null, come down to coordinates and change this to 0 0.1. And then you want to just position it. Okay, cool, so that's our floaties. So you can add both of those floaty rigs to the special effects now, and I think it's time to build the camera move. So let's just turn a few things back on first. Okay, cool, so let's duplicate the 300 mil camera. Let's call this, and let's look through that. Make sure you're on frame zero, and we wanna find our opening frame. So I'm gonna actually line up this camera using the coordinates here rather than just sort of by freehand as such. So let's delete the protection tag there and I'm going to just zero out the rotation. And so now just spend a bit of time finding your opening frame. Okay, that's looking a bit dark. I think our environment is a little bit strong here. So just change the attenuation to 0 0.08. It's a little darker. Just give it a quick bucket render to see if that's gonna look all right. Yeah, I think that'll be all right once we add our post effects and do our color grade, but we can always change that later, but that's all right for now. Okay, let's just move this fern out of the way. Um, we'll fix the ferns and stuff up in a moment, but let's just get our camera set. Okay, that's nice for an opening frame. So the things that we want to keyframe, click on the motion camera, come to coordinates. Okay, let's add keyframes for XYZ movement and our rotation of the camera. Let's also add a keyframe for the focal length. And we are also going to want a keyframe for our bokeh. Just keyframe the COC radius. Now let's jump forward to frame 125, which is the halfway point of the clip. And the first thing we want to do, come to the camera, object, and change the lens to 36 mil. Keyframe that. Come across to the coordinates. So now we want to use the coordinates to reposition the camera so that Yoda is framed in a much the same way as he was on frame zero. So let's do that. Okay, and then you want to keyframe that. Let's stop the live view for a moment. You want to right click on the camera, come down to show tracks. So these are the keyframes and what you want to do, if you click this top one here, it selects all the keyframes at that frame. If you hold down control and drag, that's going to copy that frame and you want to drop that to frame 250. And now we're starting to see that effect of the background crunching in the vertigo camera move. And you can play with different lens sizes to make it as severe as you want. Alrighty, come to the redshift tag, let's add some post effects. So you want to take over a bloom override enabled. Let's give that a threshold of five. And that gives a bit of bloom around the lights. And let's enable flare. Cool, so that's our camera sorted. So what we want to do now, I think, is just spend some time tweaking some of the assets just to make it the frames look a little nicer. So I'm just going to go through and do that now. Okay, so just in terms of the lighting, um, there's a few things I think we want to change. So firstly, I don't think we want this background stuff as being affected by that backlight. Let's find our backlight, set backlight. Let's come to the project tab and let's put some more things in here in the exclude window. So I don't think we want it to affect the flower trees and I don't think we want it to affect the ferns back there, the 2K ferns. And I don't think we want it to affect the background flowers either. They've got their own incandescent. Now, while we're talking about this backlight, I don't think it's quite doing what we want on the moss. So let's just see if we can crank it up a little bit, see what that does. Let's just go, let's just see what happens when we really crank it. Let's bring it forward. So see how it's starting to light up the edge of that, that moss here? That's what we want. 
Okay, cool. So yeah, so get it positioned nicely behind Yoda and you get a, a nice edge on the moss. Now it looks like we are, we're getting too much interaction with the atmosphere here. So let's just work out what is contributing to that atmosphere. I believe the dome light is. So click on the dome light. Just see what happens if we take the dome light off that. Yeah, that's better. Maybe let's take it off the front light, see what happens. Okay, now I also saw that the micro floaties around the mushrooms go a little bit too high. And I actually wanted these micro floaties to be illuminating this area a little more than they are. Rather than crank up the incandescent, which just makes them blow out, I'm gonna put an area light there. Let's go redshift, lights, area light. Let's go to the object tab. Let's change it to a yellowish color. Let's change it to a sphere. And let's go, it's quite small. Let's go 30. Bring it across to where the mushrooms are. Now obviously way too intense. I don't know, let's go 20. I think what would be good because what they're doing, what it's doing is it's blowing out the mushrooms. So why don't we use that project and exclude mode? Why don't we put the mushrooms? We come down to the set, the mushrooms. Why don't we drop them in there? Yeah, cool. That's starting to look better. Maybe still just a little too strong. 15. Maybe make it a little smaller. Maybe 20. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm finding the specular on his hair really intense. So just come down to the hair material, the Cinema 4D one, not the Redshift one. Open that up, come to specular, and let's just dial this all down to 30. Yeah, that's better. Let's just dial the Yoda lights down a little bit. He's looking a little bit too lit. Nudge the dome light off. And I am finding this is a little bit too intense in here. It's kind of taking the attention away from the subject. So let's go to the set front light. Dial it right back. So try four. And I'm still for, and these are too intense, these flowers. So let's exclude them from the front light. Let's just go full screen for a moment and do a bucket render and have a look. Okay, great. It's looking pretty good. I think in terms of the tutorial, it's about as far as we need to go in cinema. Let's prepare to render. Okay, let's turn on the subdivision for Yoda. And let's delete that old trees. We don't need that anymore. Let's head up to the render settings. I'm going to come down. I'm going to change this to all frames. So frame range, all frames. Good. Come to save. I like to use TIFF so that I can color grade more. These settings are all pretty good. Let's choose a directory. Come down to redshift and then choose your settings here. I'm going to change it to high, leave everything else, and then when you're ready to go, render the picture viewer. So yeah, that's 3 minutes 51 uh, on a single 3090. So you are talking about quite a long render time for the 250 frames. And like I said at the start of the video, there's probably ways we can optimize that and I'll maybe do another video at a later date about that. Okay, let's jump into After Effects. I'm going to keep this part of the video quite short because I'm trying to keep this tutorial under an hour. Okay, so come up to the project panel here, right click, import, file, and then navigate to your render folder where you have your image sequence. Click on the first one. Make sure that TIFF sequence is selected and then choose import. So for this part of the tutorial I'm actually just using the previous render. There's only a couple of minor differences from what we just created. One being that the lens goes a little wider so at the widest point it actually goes to about a 23mm. The other difference is some of the trees are positioned differently but all in all it's the same project. Okay so let's right click on our image sequence, come down to interpret footage, main and let's change the frames per second to 25 to match the sequence. Click and drag and drop it onto the composition icon there and that creates a new comp. Okay, so we'll do a couple of things here. Let's come up to the effects window and type motion and let's add a pixel motion blur. Let's just crank the shutter angle up to something like 250 and what that does is just create some subtle motion blur. Just helps smooth out the look of the footage. Come down here to your composition, right click, new adjustment layer. Let's hit enter, call this color grade. Come back across to the effects window, type lumetri and let's drop that effect onto your sequence. Okay, now let's just twirl down basic correction. I'm going to make this a little more blue to make it look a little more like night. I'm going to add some more contrast. Let's have a look at the shadows. Let's twirl down the creative tab. Let's give it a little bit of vibrance and let's give it a look. I've been through a bunch of these and I think that the blue moon one looks quite good. Let's give it a little vignette. Cool, okay, let's give this a render. So 
So I think that just about does it. Let's make sure your composition is selected. Come up to composition, add to media encoder queue. That'll add your composition to the render queue. If you want to change any settings, click on the H.264 there. You can change any settings you want here. Choose where you'd like it saved. And hit render. And there we have it, zero to hundred. Good to go, thanks for watching.